Hello, everybody. Welcome to Conversations from Six Feet. I'm joining you with Dr. Jason Butch, who's the medical director for Novant Huntersville Medical Center. And thanks, Dr. Much, for joining us today. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for asking me to help. Um, I'd like to start us off just by letting you introduce yourself a little bit, telling us how you've been uh, faring through this this time. Uh, well, yes, I'm, as Tom said, I'm Jason Much. Uh, I'm a covenant partner here at Bethel uh, with my family. Um, most people in the church, at least, uh, used to know me better but as Carmen's husband. Uh, she's been a deacon and a teacher, and I was always uh, only hitting this at church. Um, but uh, I've come to know uh, lots of you uh, uh, as, as a, a member of the church and, um, and through my job, unfortunately. Uh, but, um, you know, through this time, uh, it's been, a, it's been, this has been something that, uh, I think all of us, uh, in the medical professional profession, uh, can't imagine we would have ever seen, um, uh, situations that, uh, we're dealing with across the country and across the world. Um, it's certainly something that me as an emergency physician prepare for, but, uh, but rarely, uh, if ever see. Um, so it's, it's been different times, uh, both, uh, in the, in the, um, medical profession and, and even at home, I'm doing the same thing everybody else is doing. I'm sitting at home. My kids are, are, uh, are sent home from college and, uh, and I went from empty nesting to, uh, to three of my four kids living with me again. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not doing anything different at home than everybody else is doing during this, uh, stay at home, uh, order from the state. Um, at work, it's uh, it's a little bit different. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, we've experienced incredible uh, support and response from the community. Uh, it's a it's it's really amazing how the community has stepped up. Um, we have local companies, just local individuals, um, uh, who realize how hard the nursing staff and the doctors and the ancillary staff. We can't leave out the people that they. Um, even environmental services are um, are at a different risk than they used to be. Just cleaning rooms. Um, so the the uh, incredible efforts that are going on at hospitals and the the community that has stepped up to help is is really unbelievable. Times like this really bring out the best in people. Doctor, much thank you for that. We just really do support you in the background with prayer as well. Um, and like I said earlier uh, with you, just thanks for being part of our medical team at Bethel that has really, Beth Moss has been the face, but you've been very much present in each of those conversations and recommendations. So thank you for that. We, we all do appreciate you. Uh, I'm wearing a seatbelt. Uh, so this isn't just an add-on. I'm actually taking your advice. I'm headed to my ophthalmologist in Greenville, South Carolina. And, and I wanted to thank you for giving me a little bit of ease and help me to, to say, okay, I can actually go see my doctor right now. Um, so I think that brings up a larger question though. And during this pandemic, when should somebody seek medical help? Uh, the easy, simple uh, answer is whenever you feel you need to. Um, now that's complicated. Uh, that gets complicated. So like I said, it, it seems easy, but um, when we have uh, this pandemic, and like I said, something we've never experienced before, um, I, there is a significant serious disease, um, the coronavirus, that is affecting people and can affect people. And we know it's very prevalent in the community. Um, and it's, you know, the stay at home order is very real and has, and has helped uh, us deal with this illness. But one of the unintended consequences of a pandemic like this and um, and trying to control it uh, has has led to people, unfortunately, not seeking medical care when they need to. Some of it is because doctors' offices aren't open uh, and available, uh, and clinics aren't open. But others are because of uh, of the rightful um, fear of of this illness and what this illness can do to to us. Um, so the 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 more thorough answer is. If, if you feel you need medical help, and if you would have reached out for medical help before this pandemic, that's probably a good thought process to have in your head, is to go and seek medical help. What we've discovered, what myself has discovered at working, what, colleague, what my colleagues across the country have discovered, is that unfortunately, um, people, you know, the coronavirus has not made other disease processes go away. 
heart attacks are still happening. Strokes are still happening. People are still getting severely dehydrated from a GI illness. Um, so, but what we've noticed is that people are not coming out of their houses and seeking medical help, and they're presenting late in the uh, process of some of these um, some of these illnesses. For example, heart attacks and strokes. And what that leads to is we can we have ways of treating um, these illnesses early and more options of helping people get through this and um, and help help them uh, maybe preserve their heart or preserve their brain. But if you wait at home and try to I mean, use the word power through it or try to get yourself through it, um, those options that we can treat you aren't aren't as easily available and you may have done more harm to your health uh, than health. And that's what we're trying to to avoid. We need people to be smart about coming out of the house and exposing themselves. But we also need people to take care of themselves and remember that they do that there are other medical conditions out there they need to take care of. Dr. Much, thank you for that. I've heard that same thing from nurses, uh, doc, other doctors. And coming from you, that's going to mean a lot to our folks. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, one more thing, Tom, that um, I meant to mention. Um, with this virus, you know, all doctor's offices, emergency departments, um, we are prepared. We are ready for this virus, but we're also ready for everything else. Hospitals and doctor's offices are safe. Um, yes, there is coronavirus present, but um, all of uh, all of us have uh, have tried to make our facilities as safe and as possible. Uh, so there are ways of coming to the doctor and being safe. You're not uh, not everybody's in a in a in a cage together, so to speak. Thanks for adding that. That I, that that adds a layer of comfort. It really does. So as we talk about reopening, um, and I was in a life group even last night, there was, you know, there's a little bit of a mixed opinion on this. Some think that we've gone too far. Others think that, you know, we're doing just fine as we are doing. So how should we approach reopening, um, maintaining kind of these levels of precautions that, that you all have been uh, strongly recommending? Right. Well, the reopening is exciting. Um, uh, everybody's been locked in, and and uh, and so reopening is exciting, and it should be. It should be because it's the first sign of, of some normalcy returning to everybody's life. But the issue with that is we've got to do it um, I, by by we. I'm not referring to the government. I'm referring to us as individuals coming out of our houses and, and entering the community. We've got to do it cautiously. Um, uh, we've got to follow, we've got to continue to follow the state recommendations and abide by them. Um, they're there for a reason. They will help us. It's already has helped um, length. It always has helped this spread out and allowed our community to, um, to, to not be, um, be hit with the surges and the large numbers at one time uh, that can overpower a hospital system and a community system. Um, so first is, just, is we still, while excited and, and want to get out and, and just do things that we haven't done in five weeks, uh, very cautious. Uh, it's important that, to remember that even though we're reopening, the coronavirus hasn't gone away. Uh, it may sound like I'm contradicting what I said just in the previous question, but the coronavirus hasn't gone away. It's still out there. So just because um, we're going to be re-entering the community doesn't mean we, we need to put our guard down. People need to be washing their hands, need to be wearing their masks six feet apart. Uh, these these things that we've been practicing at home, we need to, when we step out, we need to continue to um, practice practice the same way uh, just in front of um, in front of other people. Um, I think that's uh, that's the, one of the big things um, to remember. The other thing is, if you are sick, if you are feeling, a, if you have a cough, if you have a fever, if you um, are having vomiting and diarrhea or body aches, don't go out into the public and, unless you need medical help. Uh, don't stay at home when you need medical, like we talked about, but don't go out into the public. You're, you're, you are, you're still um, making yourself potentially at risk to get sicker and, and exposing others. So the, those are times that you've still got to, um, to practice the same way we've been practicing. Dr. Much, thanks. I, I was very intrigued by the state's executive order uh, from Governor Cooper 
saying that churches could worship outside. Um, I've told people that that's not going to change our recommendation at session, um, that our decision has been based on the medical team's suggestion to really refrain from gathering in these large groups because we have such a high degree of vulnerable and vulnerable population until phase three. Um, and, and then we'll meet outside for a few weeks. So we're still going to church and I'll be holding off. Um, I appreciate the way that the, the executive order came out and really lets churches make decisions for themselves as businesses make decisions for themselves. And I guess we'll just keep praying that everybody stays smart um, and stay safe in all this as we reopen. Right. Uh, Jason, thanks very much for your time. And everybody, thank you for watching. Um, I'm sure that this is going to be watched by many people. And, and your words, Dr. Much, are going to be very much appreciated. We hope you have a great day. <laughs> thank you. Are you heading into work uh, today at all or not? I work out this evening. I got the evenings this weekend. So. Okay, well, listen, I spoke with a couple of people that saw you this week, and they said, be sure to tell Dr. Much thank you. <laughs> so you're really touching a lot of lives. God bless you and be with you in your work. And, and the same for you all listening at home. Thanks for being part of Conversations from Six Feet and, uh, and the medical update today. Uh, and we'll see you on Sunday for Worship at Home. Have a great day and weekend. Bye-bye.